welcome to the future site of the MGM Music Hall at Fenway. We are so happy you could all be with us today. <laughs> Uh, my name is Zeynep Curran. I'm the Vice President of Corporate Communications for the Boston Red Sox. And um, we are going to get right into our program to keep things rolling. And it is my pleasure to introduce the President and CEO of the Red Sox, Sam Kennedy. Thank you very much, uh, Zeynep. And it's appropriate that she kicked us off today because this is going to be one heck of a rock and roll uh, venue, and Zenob is a rock star with the Red Sox. Thank you for all you do. She put all this together, so thank you. This is a, a very big day for Fenway Sports Group uh, and our partners at Live Nation, at MGM, and Aramark. Um, over the past 18 years, John and Linda Henry, Tom Werner, Mike Gordon, David Ginsburg, Mike Egan, and all of our partners have dedicated a ton of time and effort into the revitalization and restoration of Fenway Park. Today's groundbreaking signals an important new era in Fenway's history, one where our group promises to apply the same thoughtfulness, care, collaboration that we've tried to demonstrate in saving Fenway over these past two decades. We're now looking to examine appropriate development for the properties that this partnership owns in the Fenway neighborhood. Our vision for Fenway 3.0 is to imagine and create new spaces that complement and enhance our beloved Fenway neighborhood. The goal is to make Fenway the entertainment destination in the city of Boston. And while the MGM Music Hall at Fenway will certainly provide entertainment options. It will also be a resource to our neighbors and a space where our community can gather, especially up and coming artists who we hope to retain and stay and live and work right here in the city of Boston. Thank you. So today begins a two year project that we hope will transform this area that we affectionately call the Triangle Lot into a state-of-the-art, multi-purpose performing arts center. Yes. As usual, I'm right on cue. <laughs> I guess we are going to transform it into a state-of-the-art, <laughs> multi-purpose performing arts center that will occupy roughly 91,000 square feet on four levels and accommodate 5,000 patrons. I can assure you that this project would not be possible without the leadership of our incredible mayor. As everyone here knows, his efforts have truly transformed the entire city of Boston. Since he took over in 2014, he has reimagined what this city can and should be. And I can assure you, he has worked tirelessly to realize his vision each and every day. Mr. Mayor, your efforts have made Boston the most desirable city in the entire country. And as a kid who grew up one mile from here, Boston has never, ever been better. Thank you for creating an environment where projects like this are possible. And I am extremely proud to have the honor to introduce the mayor of our great city of Boston, Martin J. Walsh. Thank you very much, Sam. Uh, I want to first say, start by saying I feel so bad for that poor kid out there. <laughs> He's dying and we're laughing. And then I feel bad for Mike Brohl from Public Works who's going to clean the street up after, but that's all right. Um, let, me, let me just say uh, this is an exciting day here in Boston, and I, I want to thank Sam and the Red Sox. I want to thank uh, John, Linda, Tom, Mike, the whole team. Uh, at, at, at the Family Sports Group for all that you do and, and for this day today. Uh, MGM, Live Nation, 
congratulations and thank you uh, to all the partners that are here. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to talk about Boston Arts Academy in a minute, but our talented students from Boston Arts Academy uh, that are here. Um, Dawn Law and the House of Blues. I want to give a special shout out right now to Dawn Law and the House of Blues because uh, for a couple of reasons. One is they recently hosted a, a great event at the House of Blues uh, for a new youth art program, uh, grant program called Shout Syndicate. And I want to thank you for making that a big success. That was a great night over at the House of Blues uh, and appreciate all your work. I also want to give a shout out to a couple other people. Uh, City Councilor Josh Jacob is with us today. Thank you, Councilor Jacob, for with us. Uh, State Representative John Santiago is here with us. Thank you, Council, uh, Representative, for being here. Uh, if any other electeds, I'll see you in a few minutes or I'll get your shout out to you uh, before that. Um, this exciting nuance venue uh, is being born in our city. The MGM Music Hall will be a beautiful, state-of-the-art performance venue. It will welcome, it's a welcome addition to the Boston music scene. It's a great, it's gonna be a great resource for our students, uh, young people throughout the entire city of Boston, not just here in the Fenway area. A few years ago when I became the mayor, we launched something called Boston Creates. It was a citywide cultural plan. We, we realized that we weren't capitalizing on the arts, and we, a lot of people felt their voices weren't heard. And we brought, and Cara Ortega is with us today, Elliot Ortega, the Chief of Arts and Culture for the City of Boston. We, make, we wanted to make arts more accessible for everyone. We wanted to make sure that it was in all of our communities. We wanted to make sure that Boston's a place where artists can thrive, stay here, live here, and work here. And we're raising Boston's national profile as a leader in music, theater, and all kinds of creative expression. Boston Creates showed us after we'd finished the plan that we needed more performance venues all across our city in all different shapes and sizes. We put out a call to, 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 to do this with new projects, and we're seeing all kinds of new beautiful spaces opening up and being created all across our city. The Colonial Theater, the City Winery, the ICA Watershed in East Boston into our new arts district in Uppins Corner, which we're working on right now in the city. So we're soon also going to see the MGM Music Hall added to that list. This 5,000-seat theater will help Boston attract the most exciting musical acts touring the country. And I know that uh, uh, Joyce Lenahan's with me today as well. Uh, a lot of groups years ago would come to the city of Boston in the 70s and 80s, and they'd start their acts here. And over time, we lost that. And we have an opportunity here to create that and bring that back to our city, where we become the city where the foundation is laid for those music acts. And some of them will be playing right here behind me in this theater. This will have a big impact on the surrounding community. Again, I want to thank the Family Sports Group for their extensive community engagement. And I know they're committed to being good neighbors. To the residents of this neighborhood that are in this room, thank you very much as well for working this process through. We're able to have a great process, have a lot of conversations about it, and it's something that we should look at as something enhancing the neighborhood, enhancing this particular part of the neighborhood. There's a lot going on in the Fenway neighborhood. We're seeing a lot of new housing being built. We're seeing retail. We're seeing some nightlife. The city of Boston is making historic investments in our parks, the Back Bay Fens, the Muddy River, the Emerald Necklace, along with our partners at the state and the federal government. We're making the area, trying to make the area working more walkable and bikeable. I know not everyone likes the bikes, but we are going to make it more bikeable. And we're also doing an incredible build of a brand new school across the street, Boston Arts Academy, $124 million. So how about it for the students of Boston Arts Academy? And this is truly a world-class public arts academy that's got to be right next door here. Uh, and I want to thank all of you for the support. I want to also make a special thank you to the Red Sox Foundation and Live Nation for their commitment to the Boston Arts Academy. They con they're contributing $500,000 to the school. They're also... <laughs> they're also giving our students access to events, internships, paid jobs, professional mentorships. They're working with Berkeley School of Music and the Boston Conservatory at Berkeley as well. Projects like the one that we're in the parking lot of are showing the, showing the signs of the strength of our city. Off the bat, this new theater will create 200 construction jobs while this project is moving forward, 500 permanent full-time and part-time jobs, and the benefits will be felt in the city and beyond for years to come. New projects like this help us make historic investments in the things that matter most to the Boston community, like housing, schools, 
parks, jobs, transportation, and job training. This is how we invest in our future. This is how we harness our city's growth to lift up all of our neighborhoods all across the city. I want to thank all of you for this big investment in this neighborhood. Thank you for supporting Boston's leadership in the arts, and we're going to continue to, to make great gains. And thank you for creating such incredible opportunities for our young people. And I look forward to being here not too far from now, listening to some shows. So I don't know who you can book, but if you could book a couple, like, you know, you two maybe for a small venue, you know. I know Elton John's on this final tour. Maybe one Elton John, if you could do that, you know. But I want to thank everyone for being here today. Thank you, Mayor Walsh, uh, for your support of this project and for your leadership. Um, I am privileged to work for a ownership group with a number of strong leaders, and it is my honor to introduce one of Fenway Sports Group's most creative and inventive leaders, uh, the chairman of Fenway Sports Group and the Boston Red Sox, Tom Werner. You know, groundbreaking loses a little bit of its luster when we're already hearing shovels, but uh, we'll deal with that in a minute. Anyway, when, uh, when John, Henry, and I became stewards of the Red Sox, we hoped that our work in saving and preserving and enhancing Fenway Park would be one of our lasting legacies. And as you all know, for years, our focus and investment in the area of real estate development was concentrated inside the walls of Fenway Park and why we will continue to make improvements to the ballpark and to the fan experience, we are now in a position today to shift our attention outward to enhance the surrounding neighborhood with exciting entertainment options that complement Fenway Park and are benefiting our thriving community. The first major step in this effort was to figure out a way to make this quirky triangle-shaped lot for many years serve as something more than a service yard. So we wanted to create a space that would enhance the entertainment district that has been well established on Lansdowne Street. And just as important, we wanted to create a space that could be of service to our neighbors. With many renowned performing arts institutions in our neighboring vicinity, we knew an indoor small scale venue would not only be able to serve as a great live performance center, but also as a resource and gathering place for the many performing arts institutions in our city. And as the mayor has said, within a, a stone's throw, you find the Boston Arts Academy, Berkeley College School of Music, and the Boston Conservatory at Berkeley. We now hope that we are creating new opportunities for performing arts programming and educational initiatives for the many students studying the arts in the greater Boston area. After all, Fenway Park has taught us the importance of a community gathering place in our city. So our hope is that this new venue will serve as an epicenter for the arts. And our aim for it is not only to be the destination of established artists who come through Boston, but also as a birthplace for aspiring artists, artists who wish to walk in their shoes. Mayor Walsh, as Sam has said, this project wouldn't be possible without your leadership. And we thank you for your support and the support of your office and from the many agencies of the city in Boston. Don Law and the entire team at Live Nation, you have been our partners from the beginning, helping us navigate the music booking industry from the first show at Fenway Park with Bruce Springsteen in 2003. Thank you for your partnership and friendship for these many years, and for now expanding that partnership with us as we begin development on the MGM Music Hall of Fenway. And Don, as I looked at you last night, I wondered, why do you look younger today than you did 20 years ago when we first met? The music, the music business must be revitalizing. <laughs> to our many friends at Aramark, including their new CEO, John Zilmer, Mark Bruno, and Carl Middleman, our collaboration with you has been even longer than the one we have with Live Nation, and we look forward to growing our relationship with you as we continue to push the limits of concession fare in our venues. To Jim Muren, Bill Hornbuckle, and all of our partners at MGM, ours with you is the newest relationship. 
yet our excitement for this collaboration is not in any way diminished by its brevity. We could not be more proud to have your brand in bright lights on our marquee. And speaking of our valued partners, the success of this project is made possible by the tireless efforts and expertise of an incredible team assembled of the best architects, consultants, and contractors in the business, led by DAIQ, Jones Lang, LaSalle, and, Gim and Gil Bain. So we could not be more thrilled that you're all here with us today and that on the other side of our baseball theater, which we built 107 years ago, there will now reside an actual theater benefiting our thriving community. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Uh, you mentioned all of the great ways that the MGM Music Hall will benefit our community partners and our neighbors. And the mayor also noted a partnership with the Boston Arts Academy, our closest neighbor. And today, I have the privilege of introducing a group of talented juniors and seniors from the Boston Arts Academy who will be performing an a cappella number called the Java Jive. Uh, these are the Jazz Cats, as they, as they call themselves. So please welcome these highly talented students. Come on up, guys. Do mi so I love coffee, I love tea. I love the Java Jive and it loves me. Coffee and tea and the Java and me. A cup, a cup, a cup, a cup, a cup. I love Java, sweet and hot. Whoops, Mr. Moto, I'm a coffee pot. Shoot me the pot and I'll pour me a shot. A cup, a cup, a cup, a cup, a cup. Oh, slip me a slug of that wonderful mug And I'll cut a rug till I'm snug in a jug A slice of onion and a raw one Draw one Waiter, waiter, percolator I love coffee, I love tea I love the java jive and it loves me Coffee and tea and the java and me a cup, a cup, a cup, a cup, a cup. Boston beans. Soy beans. I said those itty bitty little green beans. Cabbage and green. You know that Ooh, I'm not kidding ah, about ah, a pie. Ah. Unless it is a cheery coffee bean. Talk it, boy. I Ooh, love chocolate, ah, sweet and ah, hot. Ah, Whoops, ah, Mr. Model, ah, I'm a coffee ah, pie. Ah, you shoot me a pot and I pour me a shot. A cup, a cup, a cup of that Zambas. Oh, slip me a slug from that wonderful jug. And I'll cut a rug that's snug in a jug. Drop your nickel in my pot. Taking it slow, waiter, waiter, per I love coffee and tea. I love the Java Jive and it loves me. Coffee and tea and the Java and me. A cup, a cup, a cup, a cup, boy. A cup, a cup, a cup, a cup, boy. A cup, a cup, a cup, a cup, boy. Thank you so much, guys. What a talented group of students. 
Uh, and thank you to your instructor, Jimmy Lim, who is here. Thank you for allowing us to borrow your students this morning. And thank you for skipping class this morning. I think if, <laughs> if you're at an event with the mayor, I think you get special dispensation, right, Mr. Mayor? Um, so you students may not realize it, but you have just performed in front of one of the top executives at Live Nation. You may want to get his card after this, just so that you have it for the future. Uh, it's a good networking opportunity. Um, Live Nation has been our partner since 2003, and we could not have asked for a more capable group to help us run and operate the MGM Music Hall at Fenway. Please welcome the president of Live Nation New England, Don Law. Um, let me first say that we're going to make a commitment right here and now that those kids are welcome to come back and open the hall on our first performance. In the, um, they, they really were terrific. I mean, they really were terrific, and they absolutely, this is a commitment. You're on the bill, the first show we, we do. Um, I want to take us back in time, uh, uh, not that long ago, when the Red Sox and Fenway Park were owned by different owners. And what was interesting about that time period is that the owners took the position that Fenway Park um, should be torn down, condemned, and that we should move the ballpark to the seaport. And all I can say is, thank God that didn't happen. And what obviously did happen is we had, under the leadership of John Henry and Tom Warner, new owners that came in and invested hundreds of millions of dollars in the old ballpark. And I look across the street and I see lines for historic tours on a daily basis. So the dividends are clearly there and clear, it made a huge difference to us opening the venue. And so um, the other thing that happened with the old owners is that uh, we would approach them every once in a while about doing a concert, um, trying to find something that would get them interested. And they had no interest. There was no interest in um, having entertainment of any kind. And so we waited. And then with the new owners, of course, uh, in the early 2000s, we presented Bruce Springsteen, which opened um, up the venue for the first time. And the remarkable thing about Fenway, um, really two things. Uh, what we discovered is that, you know, with the improvements, Fenway plays like a 1912 amphitheater. It's, uh, it has a certain charm, and it actually uh, sells better than many other venues. And we've always sold the industry that it's really our equivalent of the Hollywood Bowl. Uh, it does extraordinarily well. But the other thing that was critical to us is that um, when you're working with a venue is how does ownership and man management deal with our business? Uh, we have uh, artists that have you know, financial demands, they're on the road, they're very fussy, they have specific requests. And honestly, in, in a simple language, some venues get it and ownership, and some don't. Uh, and it's a challenge. And I'd have to say that categorically, um, the Red Sox have gotten it better than anyone else we deal with. Um, they have gone out of their way. I think the, the face for us has been consistently um, Larry Cancro and Rom Baumgartner with uh, direction from Sam Kennedy. And any time we get, um, and you can imagine, agents and managers have placed extraordinary demands um, we've had uh, a very quick response. We've given them essentially what they wanted. We found a way to do that. And they've developed an enormous trust. And, and we have some extraordinarily difficult people on the other side. Um, and I'd have to say the Red Sox and Fenway Park enjoy a special, unique relationship with the most difficult people because they can be trusted. And, and that's not easy to get in this business. So it's, it's been uh, an enormous pleasure to be working that closely with the Red Sox. And when um, <clears throat> we looked at the possibility, uh, it became clear to us that at some point, we should build a venue of around 5,000 seats. And I started this discussion with Sam Kennedy, and we talked at length about this. And of course, then the idea of the triangle came up. And what was extraordinary about it is that, um, to be blunt, we have some very jaded people in our side of the business. Um, they're used to seeing venues and, and new designs. And uh, I have to give uh, props to John Ahrens, who is uh, here uh, from Live Nation, who does oversees hundreds of venues that he's helped construct and design. 
And in fact, he was instrumental in the design and construction of House of Blues across the street, the um, extraordinary re uh, renovation of the Opera House uh, here. But um, we, we were talking last night, and he's got one, I think in two years, he has one year, he has 20 new venues coming online. And John Ahrens is genuinely excited about this venue. Um, it partly is, has to do with the shape, has to do with everything else that we're putting into it. And I think there is little doubt that this will absolutely be the best venue of its kind in the country. And I think it'll win a number of awards. Uh, and I think the other thing that benefits it um, is the relationship across the street, since we'll all be partners with House of Blues that has enjoyed um, the Billboard Award for six years in a row as the highest grossing club in America. So we're here and thrilled to be partners with the Red Sox ownership, MGM, and thank you, Mary, Mayor Walsh, for your terrific leadership. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Don. These types of projects cannot happen without really great support of partners like you at Live Nation and also partners like MGM. Uh, MGM became a partner of the Red Sox just last season and we are excited to have them on board uh, for this new project. Please welcome the chairman and CEO of MGM Resorts, Jim Mirren. Well, hello everyone. What a great day. I want to first uh, thank the principal owner and friend, um, John Henry, and of course your, his wife, Linda. It's great to see you. It's great to be on stage with this project. And the chairman of Fenway Sports Group, my friend, Tom Warner. Uh, Mayor, it's great to see you. Um, I want to be at that first concert with you, so uh, we'll get on it. Um, and uh, to the president and CEO of the Red Sox and fellow Trinity College alumni with me, my buddy Sam Kennedy. Um, Don Law, you created uh, a spark in my life uh, back in 1981 when I traveled from Hartford, Connecticut to Springfield to see the Kinks play at the <laughs> Springfield Civic Center. So Don Law presents uh, since 1981 for me. It's great to see you here and work with you. MGM, um, is an entertainment company. We have a very simple, humble goal. We want to entertain the human race. Uh, we try to do so around the world in venues small and large, arenas as large as T-Mobile in Las Vegas to very intimate community centers uh, throughout our portfolio. One thing that um, is a common denominator with MGM is that we believe strongly that we need to invest in the communities in which we operate. We believe that our success and the community's success are inextricably linked to one another. One cannot sustain without the other. It's projects like this that mean so much to us for that very reason. Uh, to be able to be here uh, in this hallowed ground um, as a Red Sox fan, by the way, Sam, Got the socks. Thank you. Um, to be able to uh, add to the storied history of Fenway and to also continue to invest in the Commonwealth. It wasn't long ago that MGM took a, a tornado torn area of Springfield, Massachusetts, uh, and laid down our ground uh, to invest in that community and employ thousands of people from the Commonwealth. Um, we're proud of the Springfield property um, as one of the tentpole um, projects that we have here in the Commonwealth. But we want to continue to grow, and grow we will. We have a long history with Live Nation. Um, we develop a partnership that goes back decades. We are uh, a partner there in Las Vegas, as far as away as Dubai in the future, it is the most important entertainment content partner that we have at MGM. So for us to work alongside Live Nation and the legendary Don Law is a great honor. I will end with the most important message that I would have. Uh, companies are but people. People are 
a collection of core values of culture. Um, it has been my great honor to get to know the men and women of Fenway Sports Group, uh, what they stand for, uh, what they do in the communities in which they operate. It's what they do when people don't see them is what defines, I think, great character. And it's been my honor to see uh, the men and women of Fenway Sports Group work so hard, so tirelessly in their community. They inspire me. It's why I am here. And it's why I am proud to put the MGM name in such a great organization with a great set of partners. Thank you very much. I'm looking forward to today.